Well, as award shows go, this year's Oscars was about as beige as you can get. Even the traditional red carpet took a hit, replaced by a beige one. But what's got us all talking, for the wrong reasons, is the ever-obnoxious Hugh Grant. He seemingly delighted in humiliating interviewer, the supermodel Ashley Graham, on the non-red carpet. What's your favourite thing about coming to the Oscars? Um, well, uh, <laughs> it's fascinating. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, the whole of humanity is here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Vanity Fair. What are you wearing tonight, then? Uh, just my suit. Your suit? Who yeah. made your suit? You didn't make it. Um, I can't remember my tailor. What does it feel like to be in Glass Onion? Well, I'm barely in it. I'm in it for about three seconds. Okay, all yeah. right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. It was nice to talk to you. Yeah. All right, back to you guys. I mean... <laughs> I mean, it went on a bit, the Hugh Grant uh, exchange there with poor old Ashley Graham. He was just doing a job, right? If you go on the red carpet at the Oscars, or the beige carpet as it was last night, it's the biggest carpet in show business history. It is crawling in journalists. The only purpose of walking down it is to talk to the media. But old Hugh Grant, who hates the media decided he wanted to present an award at the Oscars and march down the carpet and then be a complete douchebag to any journalist who had the temerity or supermodels to ask him questions. Like, what are you wearing? Which is probably the most famous question in Hollywood history, to which the answer is, I'm wearing Dolce & Gabbana, or whatever it is you're wearing. What you don't do is humiliate and pick on a young interviewer just trying to do her job. And you don't roll your eyes and walk away like, God, have I got to deal with these idiots? Well, we've got Talk TV presenter Sharon Osborne has joined me and playwright and author Bonnie Greer. Bonnie, let me start with you. You, you apparently want to defend this behaviour. Well, you know, Piers, look, it, it wasn't very nice. I mean, I wouldn't have done it myself. You wouldn't have done it yourself. But the guy walked up to her. He's an actor. I looked at him immediately and knew he was off cue. He had his jacket open. His mm. pot belly was showing. I thought, uh-oh. And then, Why is he on the carpet then? Well, I don't know. Oh, Why well, does anybody wait, go you down? You know what? Carpet? You know, actually, probably, and you know how it is. They probably got him in the film so they could get the film made. And then he thought, let me show up to help my mates, but I really don't want to be no, here. No, he's, he he's there to he promote did. the yeah, brand yeah, of Hugh Grant. He did. He's there to appear in front of but, a billion but the, people but the, but, presenting an award. The, and for that, you walk but, down but the carpet the, and you the talk to the media. Of, new, of Hugh Grant is to be just what he was. She didn't what know a dick. it. I knew it. Well, I'm going to call him that. But you can do that. I just but, did. Well, you certainly did. I don't call people dicks. Well, thank you so Generally. Why not? Generally. What if they are a dick? Generally. Let's go to Sharon Osborne. Sharon, <laughs> uh, maybe I shouldn't have used the D word, but to me, he just behaved like a dick. I mean, he just, he just treated Ashley Graham, I felt, with total disrespect. And he pretended like the job of somebody on a red carpet, if you're an actor at the Oscars, is not to talk to the media, or if you have to, look like you're sucking lemons. Yeah, I, I have to say, listen, I love Hugh Grant, but really? he was out of order. Ashley, yeah, I do. I think he's a great actor. But a great I actor? Just, he is a great I actor. Was, he plays the same role uh, every time he does a movie. And he did one last the other no, day on the, on the red carpet. He plays a slightly no, dimwit, no, foppish British I, and that's what he did on the red say, carpet. Go the on, sorry, thing sorry. is, if you don't want to talk to press, if you are bored by it all, don't do the carpet. That's the way it is. If you know you're not in the mood to talk to press, don't do it. Yes, I it's completely simple. agree. Now, the other rule of the Oscars, because it was... I've got to say, I watched it all. It was long, for over three and a half hours again. Uh, they put back all those awards which we thought we'd got rid of last year for all the production stuff, which is very important in Hollywood to people in the industry, but nobody outside of Hollywood cares about all these little awards which then take up all the time. Uh, but then somebody forgot another golden rule, Sharon, which was uh, when you lose, you've got to try and pretend you're happy for the people who win. But, and this is something Angela Bassett yes. did not get the memo on. Take a look. Jamie Lee Curtis! <laughs> I mean, it's like she literally was sucking or inhaling a large bottle of particularly toxic vinegar. Um, she could not contain her disgust. Oh, my, my argument about this, Sharon, is she's supposed to be an actress. I mean, surely in that moment, 
what you do is you just act your way out of it. You pretend you're happy for Jamie Lee Curtis, don't you? Yeah, it's... Um, I, I Listen, I, I get it, the disappointment. That's why I never let Ozzy go to award shows. <laughs> I just won't do it. You don't want to be on She's camera sure. when you didn't win. Yeah. But, but the thing is, hey, listen, she... She knew she would be on camera. She she did what she felt. So, you know, she didn't play the game. She didn't pretend. She didn't applaud. So, you know, she's got to live with it. She knew what she was doing. She's such an experienced actress. She knows the game. Yeah. What do you think, I, I, I so, think. I mean, know, I hear what you're saying, but, you know, uh, they're actors. And I think what happened last year was Will Smith opened the door to reality. So nobody's pretending mm. anymore. And I have to say, when she didn't know what he was referring to when he said Vanity Fair, mm. I sort of rolled my eyes, too. Oh, that's your crap. Yeah, I know, but you can understand, because the big part of the Oscars is about Vanity Fair. No, 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 Fair, but, but I, I just thought, whoa. And so he played New Grant, and that's what he did. OK, we've got two people who didn't get the memo. Somebody who did get the memo right, I felt. Because I've always felt, if I ever won an Oscar, and I admit this is an unlikely aspiration at this stage, although to remind people, I have appeared as myself in nine movies that have grossed $2.3 billion. And you've got no nomination. Office, which means oh, I've actually grossed it, more Piers. than people like Will Smith. However, I don't want to oh, boast about my movie hey. career. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> pointing it out. Nine movies, two point three uh, billion in the box office. It's just a, it's a statistical fact. Um, but <laughs> if I ever did win an Oscar, uh, I would make. I, I just think you keep the speech short, heartfelt. You thank your mum. You tell a little bit about your journey to get there, and then you milk the applause and, and go away. Ki Hui Kwan, who won the best supporting actor for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, which won everything last night. I thought he made one of the great Oscar speeches. We'll take a little look at the clip here. My journey started on a boat. I spent a year in a refugee camp. And somehow, I ended up here on Hollywood's biggest stage. <laughs> they say stories like this only happen in the movies. I cannot believe it's happening to me. This, this is the American dream. You know what, Bonnie? That Right there was the American dream. But you know, yes, that was a beautiful speech. Yeah. But what you're not accepting, you, you like the beautiful parts of the realness of the Oscars. Yes. And not the ugly parts of the realness of the Oscars. No, no, and no, that, no, no. And that was no, no, Hugh Grant. No, no, you're missing my point. I like the reality. I like Hugh Grant showing us what a dickie is. I like uh, Angela Bassett showing us she's a bad loser. Because it's the truth. It's right. They're not trying to hide it. Yes, it right. doesn't mean to say that it's good what they're doing, although we can't criticise it. I don't know what good means. I like real, and that's what it was. Well, even when people it. are disbehaving gracelessly. Well, well, you know, huh? some people are not like that. On, on this one, uh, Sharon, I thought this guy, uh, Ki Hui Kwan, it was a really moving speech, but also that story. What a story that is. He came from Vietnam. His it's... family fled Vietnam in a boat. They go to Hong Kong. They eventually come through the refugee program into America. And there he is, winning an Oscar. Uh, and you think about all the debate going on right now in the UK about these people trying to come in on boats, some deservedly, some not deservedly, and so on. It was a vivid reminder that actual genuine refugees do need help. And if they do get the help, they can live a dream like that. It, absolutely. I mean, he's living proof. But, I mean, that speech was so heartfelt. I mean, I think everyone all over the world was so taken and in tears by his speech. Have you been to the Oscars, Sharon? Have you ever sat through it? Yes. Is it as torturous as people yeah. tell me it is? Yeah, because you're thirsty and hungry and you want to go to the bathroom. Wow. Having worked with you for because years it's on America... too long. Well, I've got to say, having worked with you for four years on America's Got Talent, if you were any one of those three things, all hell used to break loose. What was it, what was it like when all three were <laughs> the problem? <laughs> it's uncomfortable, Piers. <laughs> you get uncomfortable. It is incredibly uncomfortable. And I think the, one of the biggest winners of the night was Glenn Close who was supposed to be there and presenting an award, but got COVID at the last minute and couldn't attend, which I think is the Steve McQueen Great Escape Award. 
uh, because I just could not... Because <laughs> you have to sit there. It's three and a half hours. It's a ceremony. But you have to sit there, Bonnie, for four and a half you hours. You don't want to escape because of COVID, though. They get you in an hour before. I... <laughs> four and a half hours you sit there. No food, no drink. It's a nightmare. Well, have you been to Catholic Nothing. school? Catholic school. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's my background. No biggie, no biggie. <laughs> Sharon, do you think on the Oscars generally, it, each year the ratings seem to dip, 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 like all award ceremonies now. I think it was people, very boring. In a way, the pandemic sped all this up. It's like, are people done with award ceremonies? Are they done with watching a bunch of very rich, very famous people telling each other how great they are? I think that award shows now aren't really popular at all. I think they're very passe. And it's like, oh, another award show, another award show. Here we go again. Listen, the Oscars years ago were, were fantastic. And the hosts were amazing. Mm. But it just seems to have been watered down and down. And it just seems that the hosts are reading off teleprompter. I was also struck last night, uh, Bonnie, there were a lot of big stars weren't there. All the ones you normally see, like Meryl Streep and all these, you know, Tom Cruise couldn't be bothered, James Cameron couldn't be bothered. A lot of the really big, iconic figures in Hollywood just couldn't be bothered I, to go. I, I'm with Sharon. I grew up on the Oscars. Yes. And I used to just, every year, I wanted to be there. It was glorious. But so they all used glamorous. to go, and it was incredibly Everybody glamorous. Everybody was there. There was a big band. There yeah. was music. Yes. There was entertainment. There was all this... Now it's like a corporate event yeah. that we just get invited to, and it's very twee, yeah. and it's very sad. I've got the answer. They should have one more you, next you year. Go on, Sharon. No, I was going to say, Bonnie, do you remember when Billy Crystal used yes. to... Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And David Wookie, Niven when the streaker and went Wookie by. Was and there were real brilliant. big stars who came, and you really sat yes. there. You were really yep. anxious. You didn't know who was going to win. There were no odds put out there no. in the street where you no, thought, no. oh, I know that movie's going to win, and it wins. You never knew. There were big yeah. bands that played all the I music. have the solution. It was... I have a solution. Yeah. It's clearly run its course. It's I not think we have glamorous one... anymore. It's we have... not glamorous. Right, so what we should do is is kill it off. We have one more Oscars next year and we just unleash Ricky Gervais for four hours yes, and he basically yes, spray yes. guns... And he buries it. He spray guns the entire room and then he has a deep bow and that's it. And we play... <laughs> and then at the end they do the music yep. and he's carried off. That would be it. Uh, Sharon, great to see you. Great to talk to you. Uh, Bonnie, lovely to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Bye.